our study in continue with the Shmona Prakim of the Rambam, uh, just to, to mention a couple of, um, very briefly, a uh, couple of uh, interesting thoughts and interesting ideas. Um, one interesting thing is actually the Rambam also, and there's a, a fascinating uh, a discussion argument between the Rambam, Maimonides, and the Ramban, Nachmanides, uh, in uh, Parashat Vayera, where the Ramban brings down at the beginning of the parsha the famous opinion of the Ram, Rambam, of Maimonides, that the whole story of the three malachim, three angels, three people, visitors coming to guests to Avram Avinu and him preparing this whole feast and bringing and Aye Sara Ishtecha and that whole story, questionable how far into the story, but it's all part of a vision, according to the Rambam. The Rambam says that God appeared to Avram, and then it says, and all of a sudden he sees three people coming. So Rashi, as most of the commentaries say, he's, God is appearing to Avram. He's talking to, to God, so to speak. He's communing with God, or God is there with him to levakeret achole. And then it's interrupted by these three angels, three people coming uh, and to, to the visitors, the three malachim. And it, it goes so far, Rashi goes so far as to say, you see, learn from here a, a, a beautiful, beautiful idea that gadol hachnasat orchim mikabalat pnei hashchina, that Avraham, so to speak, he was talking to God, and he left that in order to do hachnasat orchim. What a beautiful idea. And then he went, and the whole story happened with the three angels. The Rambam's famous opinion here is that it, that just explains how God appeared to him. It says, God appeared to Avraham. How did he appear to Avraham? In this whole vision of the three angels coming. And that whole thing never happened, according to the Rambam. Now, the Rambam says some, you know, wild things, some interesting things. This is not heresy. This is not, you know, it doesn't take away, and it's important to stress this, and it's one of the reasons I mentioned it, it doesn't take away from the truth of Torah. The Rambam is not downgrading the story by saying it, it's just as real and just as meaningful and the same lessons, but it didn't physically happen. It happened, and that was God's apparition in, in, of these three angels coming and saying this whole thing and him preparing the food. And he says it about a number of things that happened in the Torah, the Rambam does say it, that they were um, visions as opposed to physically taking place. Um, the Ramban and others have a host of questions and the Ramban disagrees with this and says no, and shows how can this be, the whole thing, the whole destruction of Sodom and saving Lot, did that not happen? And, uh, the, you know, those trying to answer for the Rambam, for the Rambam uh, Maimonides, that, well, it, it happened, Lot was destroyed, uh, uh, Sodom was destroyed, and Lot left, but not exactly the way it happened in Avraham's, in Avraham's vision. Um, it's a very interesting and exhaustive, there's a lot, if anyone looks, it's, you know, at the, the Ramban's commentary at the beginning of Parashas Vayera, he brings down the Rambam's opinion, he rejects it, but the discussions, uh, there, there are a lot of very interesting discussions. The Abar Vanel actually goes to defend the Rambam's position and explain how it could be and it could work out. And it's a very interesting thing. I just want to mention this to you. Um, if those with, uh, I, know people, I know people here with, uh, with uh, sci training in psychology and uh, we're all, we're all amateur psychologists, I guess, here in this group. So um, the something which the Abhavanel says is very interesting. Is one of the questions that the Ramban and others asked on the Rambam, on Maimonides, is that he also says the whole fight with the angel of Esav, that Yaakov, when Yaakov was left and he moved his family over and he had this battle with Saro Shel Esav, Vayavek Ish Imo, that he battled a man, Adalot HaShachar. Also, the Rambam says that was a vision. It didn't really happen. 
So they ask on the Rambam, the Ramban asks on the Rambam, it says up, it says that Yaakov afterwards, he was limping. So how can you tell me it didn't happen? He says he had this battle and the angel of Asa touched or harmed him uh, on his thigh. And as a result, it says it's not a medrash. It's not a, it's, it's a pasuk in the Torah. So uh, how can that be? So the Abba now here comes and says something which is very interesting. He says, sometimes a person can have a, a dream or a vision, which is so real that it can affect them physically. Uh, we call Absolutely. it psych psychosomatic or uh, I think, but that there's something which can be in the head, but it can be so real. You can have a dream that you hurt your arm in the dream and you can wake up and your arm could, could be hurting. Now, maybe it's because you bumped your arm in the bed and that's what caused the dream. I don't know. But this is a very interesting idea, which the Abba Benel is saying, mm -hmm. which they, to explain the Rambam, uh, which um, I thought would be something just, again, this- it, Can I ask a question? Out. Yes. Am I hearing? Somebody's on mute. Devore, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Sarah, Sarah heard them. Sarah laughed when she heard, right? Here we go. So, so did she have the vision too? No. You know, if it was a vision, so, you know, how do we, how do we uh, leap to that, you know? Uh, according to the Rambam, that was all part of the vision. Then he imagined her laughing? That there was a vision of her laughing and she never really laughed? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which and why would God take why would Hashem take her to task for it if she didn't really do it? Yeah, that, that's a that's a good question. I don't mm -hmm. know what the yes, answer is. Yes, you laughed, you laughed, that, you really that, laughed. That, that, that's a good question. It, you know, it could be it happened, but I do know that they would say that this certainly the Rambam would say that this was all part of his vision. Now, whether it also happened and whether just taking her to task, you know, she what her you know, it, it wasn't. It was taking her to task. Uh, we don't see that she was punished because of it. it says mm -hmm. Lama Zetsa Hakasara, but it doesn't see. It's interesting. On a way, God takes her to task to Avram, uh, but uh, it, she maybe she never really did it. You know, I, I listen. I don't know if you've anyone had that experience. I've woken up. My wife was angry at me. She said I had a dream that you did something <laughs> wrong to me. <laughs> it's my, my problem. I'm suffering now. You had a dream, but yeah, I'm sure we've had this. So, uh, can I ask yeah. a question? Yes. Okay. What halachic basis does the Rambam have to say that these are visions? It is such a slippery slope. Is creation a vision? Is is Torah a vision? I, I, I find it very difficult to accept this. You, you know, you're not the only one who felt that way. And, you know, they burned the Rambam's books. Not necessarily for this, but you're right. Now, the only thing I, you know, the one thing I would say is that you say what halachic basis, there's no halachic ramification. And in my understanding, there's not, there's no, there's no lessening or cheapening in, in, in my, in, in my view, you know, people will say all kinds of things. You have all kinds of scholars, from all different uh, 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 you know, points of view, but it doesn't take away from the truth of the Torah. Now, is this a slippery slope? Yeah, absolutely, it's a slippery slope. There are those who would say that uh, the, you know, the, the splitting of a sea never happened and, and all this, it, it's a very slippery slope. And the Rambam, uh, it's part of what might make the Rambam, you know, into, he was, he was, um, Shani. Yeah, just like very it. creative. Okay, the men, you see, I got into philosophy, so the men are jumping in here. Okay. May I say something? Absolutely. Well, thank you. The problem is that the Rambam was an ardent monotheist. And if you hold, I'll use the term angels as um, apart from God rather than simply mindless expressions of God, you have gone away from monotheism. You've gone into henotheism 
or a monolatry. So to believe that uh, Hashem is the ultimate God, but he has helpers. If you believe in demons, you've gone into polytheism. So mm-hmm. the Rambam is against those ideas. So he will always go and focus on a monotheistic model. And that creates a problem if you hold that there were angels involved because according to the Rambam, angels are God. And that if you can't see God, you can't see angels. And so that's really the point of view he's coming from. They're either, you know, it, you're either seeing I, them in visions or they're simply literary devices to keep the a narrative moving. Okay, you know, I, again, it, it, it's, it's a topic which is beyond the scope here. You know, the Rambam talks about angels. I agree with you. I mean, the Rambam certainly, and hope the Rambam and the Rambam were monotheists. And even those monotheists who believed in angels, you know, again, how we understand what angels are, or you understand, or philosophers understood, or the Mepharshim understood is, is a complex topic because exactly of, of what you bring up that, that, you know, are there parts of God in the same way that you talk about the neshama. Well, we, uh, neshama is a chilek elokam ima'al. I don't know what that means, but that we have implanted within us, you know, a piece of God, again, is, is against that. And how the Rambam would explain this. But yes, you know, I mean, they, the Rambam has been taken to all kinds of places. I prefer not to go there right now, but I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with what you're saying. I want to move, uh, you had something to say? Yes. Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, Moshe Halevi Spiro, Yehudas' uh, other half. Um, okay. I'm, from, I'm from the old rabbi PhD types. So I, I just want to add one thing that's sort of in between the views of the two gentlemen. The, the Rambam uh, tended to take the view of the Gemara that whenever possible, God does not like to change nature. It doesn't mean that he can't. Obviously, there are many times that he did, but if he can work through the systems of chemistry and biology and whatever other ologies he put into the world, that is no less God uh, and no less miraculous. So the, the idea, I mean, we all like the story that uh, what happened with the angels and a lot of other stories were real events. But then but that puts the question, what is the word real? There aren't angels flying around here and we don't regularly see the sea split. So to what degree is that real? Uh, but but one, can, one can avoid the problem by simply saying Hashem chooses to appear, what Avraham was on a lower level of uh, the Rambam's many levels of prophecy. If Hashem chose to appear through angels and through a story uh, um, uh, who is it? I forget right now. Maybe the Radak believes that the whole story of the uh, Bris Ben Absorim uh, was entirely uh, uh, phantasmagoria, but that occurs because God wanted it to be so. So what's the difference if God talks to your ear or he presents an event that up to a certain point Rambam perce- the, uh, Avram perceives as an everyday event, and until at some point he realizes this is the voice of the Lord. Therefore, if Sarah laughed, she laughed. Otherwise, the Torah wouldn't tell us this, but not in the fantasy. Abraham, based on what he experienced, told her what I just heard. Sarah, knowing her biology and her age, said, that's ridiculous. Abraham totally believed the story, and she did not yet believe the story. It took her a while till she got on board as well. I, I see no contradiction there. Okay, thanks. I uh, I appreciate that perspective, but all well, the perspectives certainly, uh, both both uh, with, with, which you uh, bring. I, I think what you said, which is very important, and again, which is uh, I think crucial. And then even in the Rambam, as sometimes it may be, may be difficult uh, and it, it challenges the way that some of us have always looked at things, but the Rambam, I, I, I don't believe in the Rambam that there's, it's any less, less, doesn't take away, as you said, of, of the truth, the meaning uh, and, and the depth of the Torah. And it doesn't make it a, a, a fairy tale, uh, even if it did, did not happen exactly as we were always uh, believed as kids. Um, according to the Rambam, I want to. I want to move. Uh, I know how to get now. I know how to get, bring the men on to this now. Uh, I'm, gonna... I'm always listening. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I have to watch what I say. All right. Um, 
the uh, I, 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 one other quick thing which I wanted to mention, and this is a little bit, you know, the Ramban, something which the Ramban says, and this is, you know, you know, this is hard from a rational uh, point of view um, in our Western mind to really see and, and you know understand, but it's an interesting perspective. But I, and I want I want to share it with you because I. I, I saw it again this in the, in the Ramban, and, and I thought I, just so I would share it with you. You know, when when Lot and his family is are escaping uh, from Sodom, uh, they are told, "Don't look back, don't look back." And we know uh, Lot's wife. It says again, it's 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 not in the midrash; it's in the pasuk. She looked back, melach, and she was transformed into a pillar of salt. Um, a place that you go, you drive along the uh, the Red Dead Sea. I'm sure we uh, have, and there's a thing they point to. Ah, that's Lot's wife. Lot's wives must must be about six or seven places in the country where uh, where Lot's wife is hanging out and as a pillar of salt. But uh, whatever the whatever the case may be, it says she was told not to look back. They were told not to look back, and she looked back and and she turned into a pillar of salt. And and the perspective on this is again. It's, 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 it's interesting, and again, according to the Rambam, it, it didn't really, you know, again, may not have happened. Um, and, but putting that aside, the Rambam said, you know, why we're all familiar with the Rashi, why were they told not to look back? And I want to kind of really focus in on that. And the Rashi says, because Lot and his family did not merit on their own to be saved. They were saved in the merit of, of Avraham. Of Uncle Avram, and when 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 they did not merit on their own to be saved, they did not have the right to see the destruction of those people who perished, which is which is an interesting idea. You know, you didn't you you really you could be in the same boat. You maybe by all rights you should be in the same boat as these people. Don't don't. You, you have no right to look at this. You have no right to see this, uh, to observe this, because just be thankful that you're okay and, and you know, walk away, basically, and don't, and don't look back, which is a, a Musari ethic, ethical idea. I don't have the right, you know, I, I should, maybe I should never look at or rejoice in the suffering of others, but certainly when I, I don't merit on my own to be saved, I, I have no right to to see their to see their destruction or their suffering. That's what the Rashi that we're familiar with. The Ramban says something interesting here. Now again, I'm not here to explain it or you know how it's so, but it shows sometimes. You know, a lot of times, and I'm I'm not really there in this thing. You see, you know, the Ramban, they say the, Ram, the Ramban is the rationalist, and the Ramban is the you know uh, um, you know. Uh, non-rationalists. Uh, it fits in sometimes, um, but um, uh, listen, that, but that's, that's uh, sometimes, uh, whatever the case is, the Ramban here says something very interesting. He says, there's another inyan here, and that is, ki hareut ba'avir hadavar u'bechol ha'chalayim ha'nidbakim yazik me'od v'yad became that to see certain things, a vision, seeing certain things uh, affect you. And seeing this kind of a destruction and seeing this plague, for those people who observe it, nothing to do with the fact of Lot's being saved in the merit of Avram uh, 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 and, and none of that. For anyone to observe this kind of destruction, this godly destruction of, of, of fire and, and, and sulfur and would, would, would affect, uh, affect them. You know, sulfur can affect the eyes, but there's not, it's talking about can affect them, can affect, I guess, a, pers a person or a person's health. Now, I'm not here to explain it or to, in any way, but it's just, I just think it's a very interesting thing. You know, it says, and it says, to see certain things, you know, our, our vision, the things that we see, and we know that in certain ways, you know, 
that seeing things with our eyes, you can affect vision, you see certain things, it, 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 it can affect you in all, in all different ways. Uh, you know, hearing things can affect you, seeing nice kinds of, uh, of visions or, or flowers or gardens can, can have a certain effect on, on, on a person's um, emotional well-being. But here he's saying something very strong, that seeing the, the destruction and the plague will, could harm them. And he brings thinking about them and seeing them can affect us adversely. Uh, and that's why, in fact, the Ramban says, and he says, maybe that's why he was, she turned into an Itziv Melach. The destruction happened through Gafritva Melach. And she turned into herself. It was like it affected her. That it 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 affected her. She became uh, she became davkaba. She became infected, so to speak. Hold on one second. She became infected by seeing certain things. Now, we do see this idea. Again, you see it in the Gemara. People will say uh, they had crazy, they had all kinds of superstitious ideas, the Ramban or the Gemara. You know, I, 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 uh, you know I, I'm just putting the things in front of you uh, because I think it's interesting. There are things in the Gemara where you have places where the Gemara talks about seeing certain, you know, it says Rabbi Yochanan would, would go, when the women would go to the mikvah, he was a handsome man. So he would be there if the women would, would see him when they would go into, before they would go uh, enter the mikvah, they would see a, the handsome face and it would have a, a, positive, and, uh, a positive impact on the uh, appearance of the, of the child. Again, I'm not, you know, people again will say, oh, this, this, is, this, is, this is not, there's no, Nothing, no basis. I'm not telling you there. Uh, I know there is a basis, but this idea that things that we see um, can impact us—it's just an inter interesting thing to think about. Uh, Vera, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I want to ask you a question. So, do you think that that there was we had a negative? There was a negative effect. In fact, Am Yisrael saw the the destruction of Mitzrayim, all the Mitzrayim, how they all perished and uh, living through all the uh, makot. And uh, we witnessed it. We, as an Am, witnessed all of this. And do you think that that had some type of a negative effect upon us because we saw them all, you know, perish in the sea? I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to say, you know, I think things that we see, you know, I think we all know that things that a person could see or experience, and all, all those things affect us. Is it the vision more than the experiencing it? I think seeing certain things, you bec we become inured to it. Um, being, or, you know, uh, listen, do, do you not want to see, go visit a cancer patient because uh, you don't want to get infected by it? We, we, we know that, that that's, we would say that's silly. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know, but the idea that seeing certain things you know, there are, the, it says, and it's brought down not to look at certain things, not to, not to see animals uh, uh, copy, copulating, it, it, you know, that, that, you know, that these things can have a, uh, an effect. And I don't know, you, you, you took, think about guards, and I don't want to spend too much time, guards in the concentration camps, you see things a lot, even though people may not have been cruel people but you see them become used to them or inured to them, can they affect a person? I don't know, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, again, I put this Ramban out as food for thought, not because I, I, I purport to understand it. I want to take, can, go ahead, somebody can I just something say one thing? Yes. Uh, when Yaakov was uh, in charge, when he was uh, the Ro'etzon, for the Tzon of Lavan, he, wanted to increase the number of, of tzon that would be his, the akudim, nikudim, ubudim, all that. And he made sticks. He put in sticks that were striped or, or spotted. Yes, yes. They 
increased as a result. Very so good. They saw that and it had an effect on them. Right. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. They see they see that, you know, again, born out, uh, born out there. Again, you know, I, I'm not sure because I'm not an expert and I never purport to be in all the writings of the Rambam, whether he says that that story never happened either. Uh, but but yeah, you definitely see that, see that same idea. Yes. You're on mute. You're on mute. Okay. Now, could you hear me? Yes. Okay. I would say that it could work, that Devorah's question could work Latov or Lara. I think, I mean, it's absolutely a terrible thing, but once the pictures started coming out from the concentration camps, I think it did make a difference to the non-Jewish world about whether we were going to have a state or not. Um, it could be that people are more inured to it today, but certainly then when these pictures started coming out and they were at the movies, uh, in the newsreels, it started to make a change in the way people saw the Jewish people and their problem. And I definitely think it made an impression on pushing things towards us getting a state. So it can work both ways. Right. I would say you have sure. to be very, very careful what your children see. And that's the problem right now with people worrying about filters, but there's Zoom, but there's internet. It's a very fine little line, but it could work from this way and from that way. What you see can influence. And we were just talking about Rivka uh, seeing Eliezer from afar and then later seeing Yitzhak from afar and her falling off the camel because she's so inspired by what she saw. So I definitely think that either way, for sure. but, but you got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's a very important comment. Uh, we'll, we'll leave this topic on that comment. Uh, the, the, I just see someone wrote that Lot did have his chus, that he was quiet, and that, that, and that Lot was not completely uh, void of any zuchut. Uh, somebody shared that comment, which is a good point as well. I, I'm gonna, I want to move in the time remaining to what we were, we were discussing in the Rambam, uh, and that is, if you remember, the Rambam was talking about chole uh, hanefesh, which again he doesn't, he's not, not doesn't refer to depression, uh, but refers to uh, people with character traits with tchunot hanefesh, which he uh, he deems is not healthy. And now he's going to talk about how he explains uh, um, uh, stuff. Uh, which are not healthy and and how he explains those are uh, which are which are healthy and it gets, gets us to the fourth of the Shmona Prakim of the Shmona Prakim which I want to try to cover um, at least to some extent today the Rambam sees just before I begin he, he, he talks about two things he talks about actions and he talks about Tchunot HaNefesh the Actions are things that we do. Tchonot hanefesh are the, you know, what's inside that causes us to act. If we follow, follow, follow our, our desires or tendencies, whether they're inborn tendencies or they're tendencies which we've built within ourselves, which we'll talk about, but whatever those tendencies, those, the, the tchonot are the tendencies, the actions that we do, are generally as a result of those tendencies. And the Ram, Rambam says here, what he says here in Shmona Prakim, he also says in his Mishnah Torah, in Hilchot Deot, in Mishnah Torah, he brings it down in halacha form, and Hilchot Deot. Here he's more free, free, uh, free, uh, talking freely or writing freely uh, in terms of this chapter, but he says these very similar ideas albeit with certain nuances and certain dif differences, but he speaks about there, he speaks about there as well, if anyone wants to see it. It's in Hilchot Deot. And this is in the fourth parak. So he says, listen, the Rambam says, Ha'ma'asim ha'tovim heim ha'ma'asim ha'shavim. The best way to act in all the different characteristics are those which are shavim, equal. And to explain what he means by that. Hamimutsa'im, which are equidistant. 
בין שתי הקצוות between two extremes, ששתיהם רעה, which both are bad. האחת מהם תוספת, one is too much, והשנית, and the second one is חיסרון, is too little. The Rambam sees all midos as if we were to construct a line, every single mida, with, and every single mida, it's not, you have good midos and bad midos. It's, it's a whole different paradigm of looking at midos. There's not good and bad. There's a continuum, a line, and a, there's one extreme, which is taking the mida to an extreme, and there is another extreme, which is taking the mida to the minimal minimal of it. And the best way to be is somewhere in the middle. Uh, he actually says exactly in the middle. Now, how do you define exactly in the middle? He'll, he'll, he'll talk about that. But that's basically his idea. Let's see what he says. He says, and I don't have this in yellow. Ha-ma'alot, hein tchunot. Now, ma'alot is that he said, there's the ma'asim, but then there's ma'alot hamidot, having a personality of a, a, a lofty personality of characteristics, good midos, what we would call now. Hein tchunot nafshiot v'kinyanim, interesting, he says two things here, characteristics which we have in our nefesh and things and characteristics which we've acquired which are in the middle of the two, the two bad extremes, and both extremes are bad. And from the characteristics which we have inside come the way we act. And he says, for instance, Zihirut. Now, Zihirut will translate as being careful, but he's talking about Zihirut between a person is talking about the midah of, I don't know if we say enjoying life, enjoying physical things. He says the middle, interesting, he calls Zihirut, Shehim midah memutzat, which is the middle, bein rov ha-ta'ava, between a person who just runs after and desires everything, and just wants to fill their 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 taivos, ubein ha'eder ha'gesh ha'ana'ah, and between on the other extreme person who has no desire for anything, no desire for worldly pleasures at all, which is equ equally as bad, according to the Rambam. Very important. Hazihirut hi mi pu'ulat ha-tovot v'tchunot ha-nefesh asher titchayev mimena hazihirut hi ma'alot ha-midot. He says that there's what he calls zihirut, to enjoy life, but be careful, if I can say it that way. Rov ha-ta'ava hu ha-katze ha-rishon, a person who just runs after, the heder hergesh, and a person who says, eh, I don't enjoy anything, there's no enjoyment, I don't, want, I don't have any desire to have any, any physical enjoyment. That's also not the way we're supposed to live. Hu ha-katze acharon, and look what he says, ushnehen ra gamur, and they're both, both bad. They're both ra gamur, what he says. It's, it's, it's amazing what he says. They're both lacking and they both demonstrate something missing in Midos. And he goes in every single, every single Midah. He says, think of every midah as a line and with two extremes. Chen ha nedivut. Nedivut is being a nadiv, giving, sharing with people, doing for people, being a nadiv, giving tzedakah. Mimutsa'at ben hakilut is the mimutsa'at between a person who's a cheapskate, the hapizur, and a person who gives it all away. The hagvura, what we call gvura, in the, what the Torah calls gvura, mimutza ben ha sakanot, a person who could be foolhardy and just going into all different kinds of danger situations. And the Rambam will say later, people in today's society, or people can say, can, can, can praise this and say a person who is, puts themselves, they're afraid of nothing. Not supposed to be afraid of nothing. 
a person is not supposed to put themselves in danger for, for everything. Ubein ra chalevav, givura, is knowing when to put the, the oneself into the sakana. What he calls perush hasilsul, misha mit kabed karaui ve'en no mit nabel bedavar. Silsul he calls. I don't know how we translate it. Uh, now a person who doesn't have no self-esteem and doesn't isn't make, doesn't make a shmata out of himself. But you also on one extreme is not like I'm I'm uh, the top of the heap. I'm I'm uh, so mechubad. And on the other hand, eno mitnabel but if a person has no self-esteem, doesn't treat themselves with 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 some dignity. So a person also is is that that's not right either. Every single midah, and we'll 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 we'll, we'll get into this more. But every single midah, the Rambam says, and he, he continues in this in this vein, is a uh, is a continuum. It's not good and bad. Uh, there's every single midah. There isn't a midah, he says, which doesn't have two extremes, and where the best way to be is not in the middle. Now, the Rambam is going to talk about two particular midot later on, where sometimes a person may choose to uh, go to more extreme or to go shift a little bit to more, but, but he, he maintains in his writings that the best way to be is smack dab in the middle. Now, again, what's in the middle is, he's going to explain uh, what's in the middle. But the same thing with all of these midos, he says, uh, uh, nachat is the, the, the middle between fighting and arguing about everything and also going along with everything, being just, uh, you know, oh, it's all good, nothing matters, nothing this. A person dealing with things, but dealing with things, and he brings a word which, you know, which is not, uh, you know, not known to me, the, the, the molada, who misha who below dibur below maisa lekvedut tivo vekor mizgo who can neger akitrug sheyavo mechidut tivo vechom mizgo. The and he goes on in each one of these midos anavars between gava and shiflut. Understand what the difference is between that and silsul of mitkabed and mitnabel badavar. Um, they're they're clearly related. Histapkut. Um, not to be ambitious at all is not good if somebody has no ambition. So his tapkut is to have the right amount of ambition, um, but uh, but but again, but to have it in the in the uh, in in the right mizug. Just uh, trying to get this. I'm sorry. So the Rambam explains, and and it, basically, we can have if somebody can. You know, say so you can have a get a printout. It would be amazing if we could put our uh, take our thumbprint and uh, or take a blood sample and get a printout for ourselves of every single mida where we fall out. And not everybody, you know, we in one mida we could be in the right place. In one mida we could be too much to this extreme. In one mida we could be too much to this extreme. However, many midos, uh, dozens or, or hundreds uh, of midos there are. The midah, again, the word midah means a measure, and it works out very well in terms of the way the Rambam understands it. We understand how it's a measure, because every single midah has, could be this or that extreme, and to find the right measure is what the Rambam refers, refers to as briut hanefesh. And we've all seen it. We've all seen it in every mida, in ourselves, in others. There are some people, you know, before they, uh, you know, b b before 10 o'clock in the morning, they've gotten angry five times, you know. They go here, you get angry at this, get angry at that. And there are some people, I remember having a friend in yeshiva, a roommate, when I learned in yeshiva, we have like a contest. Who can get this guy angry? Because nobody ever saw this guy get, get angry. He was like, you know, uh, he was, you know, to that extreme. 
And, and you, you know, again, the way that I understand sometimes rules is to look at the extreme cases, but we've all, you see people with everyone, whether it's anava or, or anger or giving tzedakah, you know, I, I, I had a friend when I was living in New York, uh, he was a guy who, I, I still remember this, I always say he came to my, he came to visit for dinner one night, he was single, we were married and this, and then he was going back on the, in the, we had an apartment, on, I was talking about the Lower East Side, the Lower East Side, he was going back home and he said, uh, can I borrow a dollar for the subway? So I said, I gave him, you know, whatever. The subway was a dollar at that point. I don't know how many, what it costs now. So uh, I said, sure. I said, you know, yeah, he was a friend of mine. So I said, you, you left ha- home, you, didn't, you know, without any money. He said, I had a $20 bill, but there was a guy on the subway coming here. There was a beggar on the subway. And all I had was a $20 bill. So I gave it to him. Now, most of us, if all you have in your pocket is a $20 bill. You're not going to give it to a beggar on the subway. This guy may have been, and that midah, he may have been off to uh, very much to the extreme. But the Ramam says every single midah has these has these two extremes. We'll talk and we'll we'll continue with this. I see Rev uh, Rev Ruvain is in. Shalom aleichem, and I'll uh, I'll say goodbye. It's good seeing Thank everyone. You. Thank, Thank you, Rev Ruvain. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay well. Stay healthy, everybody. Bye. Have a great.